I'm having what I came to know later is called a driveway moment, which is when you get where you're going, but you're so entranced by the story that you just don't get out of your car until the story ends. And something in me wakes up in that moment, and I fall in love with audio storytelling. I learned two very valuable lessons from that failure. The first is that when somebody's clicking through an email to perform a specific action, they just want to take that action. Any barrier to that, such as an upsell or an email opt-in, is just going to confuse or anger them and then lead to abandonment. The second is be specific and say what you mean. <laughs> I had that shame, and, and because I was carrying shame, I became a CFO for the first time when I was 26. I was really bad at it. Like, horrible. Like, I was just messing it up. Because every day I'm like, I'm going to try to be a leader, like a different leader. Like, all the leaders I've seen in my five years of working at that time, or whatever it was, right? Like, I'll be, I'll be a boss. I'll be a boss like the bosses I've seen. And I just was blowing it. Like, nobody took me seriously. I was just struggling because I thought that it meant authority and control and power, and that I had to know everything. And I was working 80 hours a week. And I remember thinking, like, all right, well, if I'm going to go down, I was going down. <laughs> I'm just going to go down and be myself. And I just need to own that I'm 26 and that this room is full of people that need to teach me things. And it does not matter. I may never know as much as them. I'm here for different reasons. And I went into work and I said, you guys got to help me. Staying connected and building your network is part of building your net worth. 80% of jobs these days are gotten because they have an insider speaking great things about them. So if you aren't out there regularly networking, and if you don't like that word, I get it, because nobody <laughs> likes just passing the business cards around and those kinds of things. All it really is is making new friends. So if you aren't out there making new friends regularly, you're going to miss out. Because at some point, somebody in your network is going to have knowledge or something fabulous, and they're going to make you. If you aren't building that network, you're not going to have it. Let's think about it. And really what it took for me, it wasn't getting a promotion. It wasn't getting, um, you know, a, 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 a step level change like that. It was really having to go work on a team that was huge. I went from having a team of 10 people where I could find everybody's mistakes to working with a team of 100 people where you can't possibly find everybody's mistakes. And what I found out is I don't like finding everybody's mistakes. It's really boring. It's really not rewarding. And it's certainly not rewarding for the people that work for you. And so we got very good at working together, communicating, set clear ex expectations, uh, communicating on how I could help them solve problems instead of just solving all the problems myself. Sure. So, so from those 10 emails, I got one response and sat down with a smart, strong, successful woman. And I'm going to tell you, going up to that interview, my heart was pounding out of my chest. I was like, why is this woman going to talk to me? Look at all the amazing things she's done. There's no way she's going to talk to me. And there's no way I'm going to be able to hold my own. I had all my questions mentally prepared. I kept her talking for 50 minutes of that hour. And the last 10 minutes, she's like, what can I do for you? That wasn't something I was prepared for. My eyes went like saucers, and I was like, Ugh. How about you introduce me to another smart, strong, successful woman? So that one coffee became two, became five, became 10, and then weirdly enough, three. I have so many people that are like, yeah, can you teach me how to build a seven-figure business? I'm like, after you teach me. <laughs> Goodness gracious, I look like a million bucks, literally. <laughs> that is the true power of social capital. Is people think you are way higher than you are, but it just started with literally a bunch of coffee dates. Like I would book myself at a hotel. I worked out here, actually, I'm really bad with directions, somewhere over there. <laughs> and um, I would, they had, a, we had a hotel right across the street, and they had a way where you could like book a space. And it was like literally you could book yourself like a sofa. <laughs> and I would book a sofa. Um, and the reason why the hotel is because the hotel has bathrooms, coffee, food. All the amenities you want and comfy seating. So I would book myself for many hours, and then I would have tons of people come and meet me there. So I would have back-to-back -back appointments for, with people, 
and I would just bet them, like, oh, okay, I really want to continue talking to you. I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> it's easy when you just have these, like, 20-minute sessions all day, and then you can kind of weed through people. And the people I liked got invited to join Women of Denver in our conversation. <laughs> so, just know, it is, it's fun building a network. You can do it as an introvert, and those tips, like building it ahead of time, were really, really super helpful and something that really helped me. And just laugh at it when people think you're, you know, amazingly wealthy and just say, okay, well, sure.